corn. There are so many options. Which ones are for you? What do all the options even mean? And what is the big difference between hybrid and heirloom corn? Once you get into the differences between corn varieties, they're so different and the uses are so different that you really have to know this information before you start buying. Otherwise, you may end up with something you don't even want. So when it comes to corn, there are four varieties. The first type is sweet corn. Sweet corn is, you're probably more familiar with sweet corn than any other type, obviously, but sweet corn is the type that's best eaten fresh. When sweet corn is ripe, it has a very low starch content compared to a very high sugar content and water content, hence making it very crisp and sweet. Compare that to something like popcorn, the second variety. Popcorn is best used dry and popped, either in the microwave or on the stovetop, and that's because there's actually a high water content in the kernel, even once dry, and a low starch content. That's important because what happens is that water actually creates steam, and the starch, because it's low, creates a pop, and you end up with popcorn. And so if it was too high of starch, you're gonna end up with kind of more of a fizzle than a pop. And then that leads me to the third variety, which is flint corn. Now flint corn is kind of a little bit in between the last variety we'll talk about and popcorn. It has a relatively high water content, but also a relatively high starch content, making it not ideal for making popcorn. But it does make it really ideal for grinding. If you're using things like, if you're, for instance, making grits for cornmeal, or you're making semolina flour, right? Any of those types of, of kind of corn-based flours, um, even masa for making your own tortillas or corn chips, it is really superior at that because the starch acts as a glue or a binder. Since there's no gluten like there is in wheat, you need something that's kind of going to act as that glue. Hence why flint corn makes a really good uh, kind of binder or malleable, moldable uh, dough that you can turn into to tortillas or uh, whatever. Compare that to popcorn, obviously, there's a lot more water than starch. And if you try to pop flint corn, you can get some to pop, but they don't end up as, as voluminous or as, as large as popcorn does. And that leads us to the fourth variety of corn, which is your dent corn. Now dent corn has a very low moisture content, high storage time, so your shelf life is very long, but a very high starch content. So these are wonderful for using for things like animal feed because it's a high carbohydrate source, but also can be milled into flour or even things like grits or cornmeal because of the fact that that really high starch content gives it a lot of carbohydrates for a lot of energy. So it's very sustaining. And they're all very different when you really look at each type of corn. So for example here, these two are popcorn. This is a red strawberry popcorn and a miniature blue popcorn. These are wonderful heirloom varieties of popcorn. And they're heirloom because they've been grown and bred for hundreds if not thousands of years. And these are, these are actually probably my more favorite popcorn varieties. There also is the Japanese hullless popcorn as well but there's many different types of popcorn. You'll find even some yellow popcorns out there as well that are more commercially available. Stuff you typically get at like the movie theater is more of a yellow popcorn. But regardless of what you go with, a popcorn, as I said, is gonna have a higher water content compared to a starch content. And that's gonna give it a very low calorie, healthy snack with a really good voluminous pop to it. Now these are two dent corns. I absolutely love these varieties just because of how beautiful they are. You have the Oaxacan green dent corn or the Earth Tones dent corn. Now there's also blue hoppy. There is trucker's favorite. There is, there's so many different varieties of dent corn out there. But what you'll notice is the dent corn has a dent in the top. And that's because of the fact that uh, the moisture content is really, really low. And because it's so dry, over time that dent actually happens when the moisture leaves the kernel, it actually creates that divot. And that divot only forms once it's completely dry. And that is caused from obviously the very low moisture content. Now, these would be wonderful and very, very great for milling. If you're making corn flour, corn meal, or if you're even, you're using it as animal feed, we're talking very high calorie, but really low moisture. So it's gonna sit in your pantry or in dry storage for two to three years, no problem at all. Now here we have three examples of flint corn. Now these are kind of what you consider to be your Indian corn. They're very ornamental. People typically dry them, use them as decoration, but they are absolutely very delicious and edible. They're quite versatile because they can be popped. You can absolutely pop these. Maybe we could try popping some, but they will pop very well, but they don't pop quite as much because that lack of moisture 
uh, such as like the popcorn. The popcorn has more moisture, meaning it's gonna have a more voluminous pop to it. They can be popped, but they can also be milled into flour. So they're wonderful for both. They do have a good storage life because they are kind of a cross between the two, kind of a cross between a popcorn and a, and a dent corn. But you'll notice they don't have a dent in the top of the kernel. They're very rounded. And so each kernel is gonna have that nice kind of polished top to it, making it really pretty and desirable. Now, there's obviously other varieties. This Hapanica striped corn is a nice black, super rich color, has a lot of anthocyanins in it. You also have this Indian corn, super pretty. This gives you a lot of like random colors, really beautiful kind of striations on the kernels. And then you also have here, you have like glass gem corn. This is probably one of the most ubiquitous kind of ornamental corns out there. And a lot of people don't think you can eat these, but in fact, they actually make you really good popcorn as well as a really good grinding corn. Um, you can also use them for things like decoration or even jewelry because they're very dense. They're really, really hard. So they can actually be drilled, polished. They can be you know, used like that as well. But incredible, incredible looking colors. Last but not least, sweet corn. Now when it comes to sweet corn, we get a lot of questions and I think it causes a lot of confusion. In both my hands here, I have sweet corn. But the big difference between my right hand and my left hand is in my left hand, I've got hybrids and in my right hand, I have heirlooms. Now hybrids, hybrids are a little bit different because technology has allowed us to really accentuate these genes. A hybrid is not the same as a GMO. I wanna be very crystal clear. Genetic modification is something like if you took corn and you put a glyphosate gene into, a glyphosate gene into the corn or you know, made it so that it could uh, be resistant to Roundup, right? Roundup is a chemical. You're gonna put that, you're gonna put that resistance into the gene so you can spray copious amounts of Roundup onto your corn and not kill it. These are not GMO. These are simply hybrids. And so essentially the sweetness or other traits are being accentuated so you get the better parts of what people enjoy. If it was, if you were get, trying to get a hybrid between, you can create a hybrid with these two, right? You could literally take the pollen from this and cross it with the pollen from this, and you might end up with a corn that's half red, half blue. You might end up with a corn that's longer but pink, shorter but blue. Who knows what you're gonna get, but you're gonna get a hybrid. If you like the result from that hybrid, that's where you save it, you preserve it, and you keep growing it out. You're really ultimately just selecting traits that you like and trying to accentuate those traits to, get, to, you know, to make them better and improve them. And that is really, the meat and potatoes about what's going on with hybrids. So now that we got that, let's take one step further into the weeds. When you come across these varieties here, you're gonna see varieties like candy corn, silver queen, peaches and cream, bodacious. You're gonna see lots of varieties like that. And they are hybrids. What makes them all unique though? And that's where we talked about the gene tweaking that happens to accentuate the flavor or the texture or the color. So first let's talk about color. That's pretty simple. You have a, this right here is a silver queen. This is accentuating basically the W gene, right? This, this is uh, all white, it's an all white cob, so this has the W gene. Then you have the Y gene, pretty obvious, it's the yellow gene. And so you have basically nothing has changed between the golden bantam and the candy corn. Nothing's changed except for the sweetness. So they are, they're basically allowing that Y gene right, the yellow color to transfer through. And what they're saying is we just wanna make it sweeter. We're gonna make this really sweet. How is that accentuated? Well, it's accentuated by what's called SU. It's just an abbreviation that plant breeders give sweet corn to show what is being accentuated. It helps you as the buyer to know what you're getting. And so candy corn is known as S-U-Y. That means it's a super sweet. And then they're also taking that yellow and saying, we're gonna keep the yellow the same. How does that compare with this white here? Well, the white is the W gene being kept through, right? They're saying the stole evergreen, it's good, but we want it to be super sweet and white. So what is this? Well, this is SE and that stands for sugar enhanced. They're basically taking the stole evergreen and they're saying, we're gonna enhance it, we're gonna modify it a little bit, make it a little bit sweeter, but not crazy sweet. So this is sugar enhanced, S-E-W. 
<laughs> so that's, the, that's how you're gonna know what this is. It's sugar enhanced W. Now I'm gonna blow your mind here. What plant breeders can do is they can actually tweak the texture as well. And that brings in something we don't have here, but it's actually uh, in peaches and cream. Peaches and cream corn, we do carry it over at migardener.com. And what you have is you have an SH gene. The SH stands for shrunken kernel. And the shrunken kernel gives you a very crunchy, poppy bite. If you've ever bitten into corn and you're like, wow, that's sweet, but it kind of has kind of a toothiness, kind of pulls, kind of has a little starchy texture a little bit. That's because it's very, very sweet, but those kernels are kind of large. So what plant breeders can do is they can say, okay, well, look, we like the flavor, that's fine. Let's enhance the sweetness, but let's shrink those kernels a little bit. You're gonna have SH for shrunken kernels, and that gives you that beautiful kind of snap, pop, where juice flies off and hits your, hits your friend across the table in the eye. That's the SH gene. So regardless of what you wanna go with, I hope you've been educated, I hope you've been enlightened, I hope the world of corn has become more open and you're just excited about growing corn varieties. Let me know in the comments box down below which corn varieties you're growing. If you learned something new, if you feel like some of your fears have been laid to rest, or maybe you have new fears. <laughs> I guess that's okay too. Hopefully you don't, but if you do, I apologize. I try to make it as, as simple as possible, but with something like corn, it gets, it gets pretty complex. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully y'all learned something new. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel, reminding you to grow bigger.